What's up guys, it's Tyler. Another week, another blue car video. We're keeping up on it. This week, decided to go with something appearance related. So today, we have our ZZP lowering springs. I had a set in my garage uh, that actually were on one of my ions, and then it was Bose ion, and then we were developing the coilovers, so he handed them back to me. So, got some hand-me-down springs, that's okay. They rode great before. We'll toss those on. I've got some new front and rear struts. This suspension may be the original. It's, it, it works well for what it is. Uh, none of the struts are blown, but, you know, got the nice wheels on it, got it cleaned up, it's looking good. It's quick now, so we're gonna give her a little bit of lowering today. If you've never done lowering springs, can be a little bit involved. Uh, the rear on these cars is really easy. The fronts, it's not a hard process, but you will need some extra tools than you may have in your garage. Uh, first thing is you're gonna need a spring compressor. Uh, when you get the old top hats off your old struts, or if you're putting new struts in, you're still gonna have to disassemble or reassemble. Uh, in theory, you could technically do it without a spring compressor. Definitely don't recommend that. So you can run them from AutoZone. We have a standalone one here. I'll show you guys how to compress and remove the old spring and then get the new ones on. Uh, another pro tip that I like to tell people is the cobalt top hat mounts. Uh, they go often, or they go bad often pretty pretty easily. Uh, I think mine are clunking already. Yours may be too. If you're trying to chase down a clunk and don't know where it's coming from, might be your top hats. So I've got new top hats. We'll toss those on. We'll toss the springs on. I've got some heights, height measurements from before. We'll uh, get everything on, get it lowered. See what the final outcome is. Uh, I really like our ZZP springs. For the price, you're getting a lot of value. Uh, they do lower a good amount. They aren't gonna be the best handling out there, but they weren't designed to be. Uh, they are a good, affordable spring. Make your car look good. They ride well. Uh, you know, we do have our coilovers coming out very soon. I'm sorry that they're a little later than I originally said, but you know, production in 2021 and all that. But those are coming out. So this may be a little rhetorical because I'll probably put coilovers on eventually, but we're doing it for you guys. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the videos. Let's get to it. you can do everything with hand tools and a lot of the parts that we sell you can't with suspension mods and especially these front knuckle bolts which I'm sure I'm gonna struggle with later you will want an impact uh, if you don't have one grab a buddy who has one or really if you're working on your car a lot you should um, so we'll go ahead and get the wheels off we'll get our front knuckle bolts blasted if you guys didn't see our last post. Check out those bed boys. ZZP Galveston caps. Okay, so now that the wheels are off, like I said, I'm gonna start with some PD blaster up front here. If you've never dealt with a Delta car front suspension, these knuckle bolts are splined. So this side stays put and then the nut comes off and you gotta hammer it through. Sounds easy enough. However, this aluminum will typically rust and seize onto the bolt. So I'm gonna get these loose later, but PV blaster for now, get it started. I'm gonna try and get it like down in there, but no real good way. So this will be a mess. Hopefully it'll loosen things up. Hopefully it's not as bad as my black cobalt because we put our prototype coilovers on that about six months ago. And Trev, I think we were here for what? Six hours? It was a solid evening. Yeah. It was and a half, time. actually. I had like a five pound sludge full yeaten on these boys and they didn't even come out. I think we had to get the torch out and cut them. Anyway, 
it was it was not a good time. So hopefully these are a little better. Front nuts are blasted. Start on the rear. So rear is actually pretty simple because of the torsion beam style suspension that it has. The um, the struts are separate from the springs. Makes install easy. You don't have to get your spring compressor out for the rear. If you're doing it on the ground, you will probably want to jack because you'll loosen both sides, it'll fall down, you'll put the new springs in, and then you'll have to get that back up and make sure the springs are seated. So uh, I have a exhaust jack over there that I will probably use, but totally feasible for the drive. So we'll get the strut out on this side, get the strut out on the next side. I said strut twice, but they're actually shocks since they're separate. Anyway, I think this is 19 and 22, so I'm gonna grab those. Okay, bottom is 21, top is an 18. Cool. We got the big impact this time. Mine was pretty big, but this one's better. Let's give her a shot. That's apparently what an extra $200 in a Milwaukee impact will buy. Like butter. Old struts are in pretty good shape, but I've got some FE5. Uh, for those not well versed in the cobalt language, like nerds like me, uh, LSJ cobalt came with FE3 suspension, base models came with FE1, and LNFs came with FE5. So, common upgrade is either an FE5 shock or we stock the Bilstein V8. Those are really nice. We've got the Coney's, which are a good replacement for fe3 stuff very similar and then you've got your base model stuff so unless you want to ride like a grandma don't go to the fe1 oh. so the reason i've got that exhaust jack under there like i said before was you just don't want the whole suspension to come flopping down your really only other attachment point once you get the shocks off is the brake lines so you don't want those kinking or break in there or any of that so throw a jack under there jack sand whatever tried to cut through that with a freaking cutoff wheel. Huh. Well. Okay. One thing that does suck if you're reusing your shock stuff is getting this top mount out of the old spring gonna be pretty tight in there but because I've done suspension on these cars so many times I just kind of have to work it out of there seeing it's better days It's a totally reasonable question. As you can see on our ZZP springs, they, they've got a lot of tightly wound coils and then your loose ones at the other end. Now, does it really matter which way you put them in? Yes and no. My thinking is that 
since the body of the car stays in one place and the suspension is what's, uh, the beam is what's moving up and down, I'm gonna put the lighter coils at the bottom and the, what you would call dead coils would go at the top. Now, our springs are progressive springs, so it doesn't make a huge world of difference. If you put them in the other way and have done this already, don't worry about it, you're totally fine. I'm just letting everybody know in the future. Now, if you had a progressive spring, that's totally different, but that's how we're gonna go about these. So, I'm gonna pop that in at the top. I discarded the rubber, but hey. It's another uh, couple millimeters drop. You know, I'm not going for stance boy low on this car. I've got my black car. <laughs> my stancy car, because it's so slow. So, that easy. So this is where I said it can be a little difficult getting everything lined up, but springs are in. There we go. Get some compression on them. And now just to put the cuts back in. If you take your bolts out and you forget which one's which, big bolt is on the bottom, small bolt is on the top. So all you gotta do slide her back up in there. Top one started. And then you just need to match up the holes there. I'm gonna take this down. Oh, I'm sorry. Up. The impact. The top one home. And on the bottom. Back to where there's no tension. There we go. One side done. Pop over. begins. This doesn't look too bad, so hopefully it's not. But we have a few nuts and bolts that we got to take off. The three pain points are going to be your two knuckle bolts like I explained before. Nuts are on this side, then bolts go out through that way, so hopefully we get these loose and can tap them out. You have to undo the ABS sensor here, which is really easy. You can grab a pair of needle nose, pop that up. And then another thing is the sway bar end links. The sway bar end links are probably bad. These ones look to be in pretty solid condition, so I'm not gonna replace them right now. We do have our new ZZP adjustable sway bar end links, which are pretty slick. If you're lowered, especially on coilovers, something you might wanna pick up. Uh, but so I'll undo this here first. Hopefully it just doesn't spin and spin. And spin. Yep, 18. <laughs> That's the first one I've ever done. Oh, cobalt, it came right off. I'm excited. Okay, needle nose. Just gotta pop that sensor off. I'm gonna undo it so I get a little more room. Get it out of the strut here. Put that aside. Okay. 19? No? 18 too. I'm not like Al. Al has a weird photographic memory and he can tell you what bolt goes where, what size it is, all over these cups. I'm very forgetful. Alright. First nut came loose, that's good.
uh, rather than take the nut all the way off of the bolt, what you're wanna, wanna, gonna, gonna wanna, gonna wanna do is get it about flush with the end of the bolt here. Uh, the reasoning behind that is when you're smacking with your hammer or purse or whatever you wanna call it, you know, uh, you don't want to balloon out the end of the bolt. Trust me, I've done that. <laughs> then it's really hard to get it through or you won't get your nut back on. So I'm gonna go grab a mini sludge and uh, we'll get the hammer in here. I'm just working these out. Coming out pretty easy. Take your little bracket off. I almost guarantee I will forget that. Use your muscles to work those out. So you can see what I was talking about here. Uh, this side is spline and the knuckle itself is spline. So if you or whoever owned the car before tried to turn this side, which unfortunately happened on my Camaro too, these splines will eat through this knuckle and then you have no spline anymore. And that's not a good time. So don't try and eat on this side, only the other. So those are out. That's amazing. I've never had them come out that easy. We will lower the car down, get my three bolts up top, get this out, and then I'll show you guys how you use your spring compressor. We're up here, we got our knuckle bolts out. We now need to get the mount bolts out up top here. I believe these are 13, maybe 12, I don't know. We'll see. Didn't we have this problem on the- uh, Straw bar video. Straw bar install, one side is 13 and one side is 12. Yep, this side is 13. The other side of 12. So probably because that struts replaced yep, with an F micro one. Okay, so that was go there. Where's my impact? Nut and bolt tray up top. Okay, so I got two of the three. I'm gonna grab the strut from down below. That one loosened. Hold. Now that we have the full assembly out, we're gonna take this over to the spring presser and I'll show you guys if you are reusing your previous strut or if you are using a new strut, you're gonna have to get the mount on and off. So we'll take this over there, show you guys how to use this, put the new assembly back together, and then pop her back in. Okay, so we are here at our fancy spring compressor. You guys don't need to have a unit like this. If you don't have one, like I mentioned earlier, AutoZone rents them. You can buy cheap $10 ones at Harbor Freight. I bought some years and years ago and I use them a lot of times. I got my worth out of them. Or if you don't want to do any of that, go to your local like O'Reilly's or Midas or any of those places and they'll have one of these and they'll probably let you use it. Quick. So the concept is simple. You want to press the spring down so it's not pushing up on the strut mount here. So, I had heard ours was broken, but it appears to be doing the job. Maybe. Yep, there we go. Cool. So we're separated there. Get the impact on the top. And sometimes you'll run into that. Shaft spins. Just gotta give it a little pressure. And 
cartridge guns. So the cobalt top mount is two pieces. You've got your lower with the rubber and then your bearing here. This is usually what will go bad. If you're turning and it's clunking and clunking or the actual rubber on the inside there will degrade. So then we release it down. it up. Release her down again. There we go. Get your spring off. Now I'm going to be using these new KYBs that have a few less hundred thousand miles on them. One thing that even the best of us forget is our bump stop. Like a dummy, I put together this suspension in my old black red line and blew out two, two struts because I didn't put the bump stop back in. Back in. spring so they're in there all nice Ooh, fresh bolt too okay so reusing this bottom piece here complete with spike that's good it's an added touch no baby spiders coming out? <laughs> no baby spiders. Who knows how long they were in there. Okay. Now going back together, whether you're doing this on an ion with our cobalt to ion spring conversion or just regular cobalt, your little tab there is going to be at the end of the spring. So match that up together. Make sure you're seated down there. And we'll get to compress it. We'll go on there, put your strut mount, go on top of that. Need to have this lined up perfectly going back in but i'm just trying to orient it correctly this be a little tricky if you don't have an impact they do sell uh, special sockets that have because there's an Allen in the top of this. It goes around and then you can get your Allen wrench in there. But impact just makes things easier. Go. Up stop and stop there. Make sure your bearing seated nicely. It spins. There we go. I'm gonna rinse and repeat on the other side, and we'll get back to you back at the crew. Okay, springs are on the struts. We are fully assembled, new top hat, everything. We're staying hydrated. Let's go back in. So like I mentioned earlier, 
these have a certain orientation. If you look at your strut top tower, you'll see that the, this kind of flat side goes against here. So orient that. SpongeBob reference. One of those started. Another one started. Right. Nice little seated up top. Don't go full yeast, because you can always break this stuff off. Put our strip tower bar back on. Brand new hardware, that's always nice. Alright, gear it up top. Now, to make it easier on you guys, I'll take the lift up. Before I forget to put this in, I'll make sure to grab it. This can be a little tricky, getting the knuckle back in, just because of all the slouch and slack. One started. Second started. Go. Where's my hammer? Again. Just remember that these are spline. Uh, stock knuckles and stock type strut assemblies aren't going to have slotted holes, so you're not going to really have to worry about uh, you know any camber on the knuckle. But you can use camber bolts if you do need that extra little bit on your stock assembly. As with any suspension mod product, whatever you're doing, you need an alignment after. Uh, as you lower the car, you're gonna bring them up, so your toe's gonna be out of whack. You don't wanna drive a thousand miles. And notice that you're wearing your tires down to nothing on the inside. Those started. We'll let the impact do the rest. Line bracket back on. Started by hand. Maybe ask the cable has seen better days. assembly back in. I'm gonna zip over to the other side, get that all together, and we'll get around the car and get some glamour shots. Alright guys, big apart. See what it looks like on the ground. Lower, 
but not just nasty low. Three quarters of an inch. Front drive. And an inch in the ring. Yeah, that's nice. It'll be perfect for the daily. Spring install went very swimmingly. I've never worked on a cobalt that went this quickly. Maybe it's because I've done it like a hundred times now, but front spring were easy, front struts came out nicely, spring compressor worked well. So yeah, I, I'm really happy. I, I like the amount of drop that our ZZP springs have. It's basically three quarter in the front, an inch, a maybe a little more than an inch in the rear. Obviously with any drop springs, they're gonna settle after a couple days. You know, these ones haven't been used in a while, so they're it's springy. I like doing weird motions every video. But uh, yeah, I'm excited. We'll drive it around and see how it feels. Uh, I'm gonna get in alignment and we'll catch you next week. I think I've been putting it off for too long just because it's gonna be a longer video. We're gonna do dual pass, option B, take the Lemonovas out, show you guys how to clean those, do your o rings. We've got that on the docket. I've got a short shifter to install. You know, stuff that everybody at home is gonna do. So, let me know what you think of the video. Let me know what you wanna see next. Bada bing, we're good. See you guys, peace.